in the movie Glass, um, it, it describes different types of quote unquote heroes and villains that became heroes and or villains based on their past. In one of the cases, one of the gentlemen, he has split personalities where depending on what happened to him growing up, he developed different personalities to cope with the trauma. And this is what they call heroes and villains. But what about the fact that possibly because of the trauma that we go through in life, that demons and fallen angels are able to attach to people and allow that drama, allow that trauma, allow that pain to overtake you and scar you for life. And that's what I want to talk about today. The trauma in our lives. And I'll use myself as an example. You know, b before we talk about trauma, let's talk about Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's a, that's a powerful verse that we'll touch back in a few seconds. For you see, the trauma that you and I go through growing up, the bad habits that you and I pick up growing up, have a tendency to shape us when we are in our elderly age or when we are already in our 20s, 30s, and 40s and we make decisions or we're in relationships or we're doing anything. It, it shapes us whether you believe it or not. You know, funny thing happened to me. Uh, at work, they celebrated my birthday. And I remember walking in and they went all out celebrating my birthday. And I didn't know how to react. I literally did not know how to react. In part because of the trauma growing up. I didn't have that growing up. So because I didn't have that growing up, I don't know how to deal with someone being kind or nice. I don't know. You see, it's like a mixture of emotions where on one end, you're like, man, that's that's freaking awesome. I can't believe they did that. But then you're like, why would they do that? I don't deserve that. You see what I'm saying? It's weird. But this is the trauma that when you come to Jesus Christ, as you begin to mature in Jesus Christ, he begins to mold you. He begins to change you. He begins to heal you. Deep within, when I saw that, I did get emotional. Now, did I show that to them? Absolutely not. We didn't try to do none of that. It's enough to make a grown man cry, but not this man. Get back in there, Tia. But, but, yeah, you got a little bit emotional. You're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I don't deserve that. But the fact that growing up, I had to have such a difficult childhood, you know, from my mother passing away to all of the situations with my brother who was completely wicked. Growing up in a situation where you crave the father's hug. You know what I'm saying? Like to this day, if I see a dad hugging a kid, I crave that. I know that's stupid. I know that's ignorant, but I do. I do crave a dad to say, I'm proud of you. Yet when someone says, I'm proud of you, man, you're doing awesome. I can't take it. Am I getting better at it? Yes, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. But why am I sharing this with you? because it's all based on trauma. And in my case, that's a fault of mine based on my experiences when I was young. And in your case, what is it that you went through? What trauma did you go through? Were you in a relationship in your teens that was rough, that scarred you for life? Were you abused as a child? Did you go through bullying at a young age? Did you build up rage, bitterness at a young age? And it's now following you through the elderly years. What is it? You know, to this day, I can count the friends that I have on one hand. And I have great people that I know. Great people that I know. But my trust levels are so slim that quite possibly I'm missing out on even greater people because of the trauma. And I'm using myself as an example. I'm leaving myself vulnerable here for you. But you know what yours is. And I pray that as you're hearing me talk about mine, you can talk about yours. I have a very select 
handpicked people that I can go to on a daily basis, weekly basis, and ask, hey, did I do something wrong? Did I set a bad example to you? Are you cool? Please call me out if I'm doing something wrong. Please just keep me in check. I have a very handful select people that I would die for, that I would do anything for. Why? Because whenever I do find that person, I'll treasure them for the rest of my life. But on the opposite end, for you to get to that point, it takes a long time. Why? Because of the trauma. Think of all I've lost, allowing the past to ruin my current present and even the future if I don't allow Jesus to heal me. The great news is this, is that in Joel 2.25, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God will restore. God will renew. God will heal. But just as I've had to open up myself to being healed, to heal those wounds deep within, you have to do the same because without a shadow of a doubt God is a healer but also without a shadow of a doubt you and I are hard-headed as can be and in our hard-headedness we can justify behaving based on the trauma versus behaving based on the Spirit of God you know that's a beautiful thing of Jesus that he can take us he can mold us. Do you, do you know that he knew about your trauma before he saved you? He knew what that woman did to you. God knows what that man did to you. God knows what your mother, your father has done that has hurt you. God knows. Now as an adult, you can go through trauma as an adult too. God knows what your ex-husband has done. What your children have done. What your co-workers have done. Oh, that trauma. But with the trauma comes the overwhelming confidence that if we submit these pains to God, He will heal. He will restore. And this isn't like that film, Glass, where you had different characters who were hero or villains based on their past. No. God can heal you. And you don't need to hide behind multiple personalities, behind fake masks, and behind fake smiles. You can simply rest in the Almighty, understanding that 1 John 4.4, 4, 1 John 5.4, God has overcome the world already. And if you are of God, little children, you've overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I love you guys greatly. I care for you guys greatly. And I mean that more than you could imagine. Um, I pray for you guys, and I really, really hope that these videos that are able to edify you and bring you closer to Jesus Christ. For we live among people that are hurting and we don't even know it. And we worry about everybody else. Hey, I want to get everybody healed and I want to get everybody saved. But today we're talking about me here. And today we're talking about you here. Will we allow God to heal us in Jesus' name? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace. We thank you, Jesus, for having mercy on us, Lord, when, when we don't deserve it. Oh, Lord, you know the people watching. And, oh, Lord, you know the trauma. And if there are people watching this that have zero trauma, that's on you. That's good. I'm proud of you. That's what's up. Hold us in prayer, then. That's what's up. But for those who have inner fears because of what's been done to us, Psalm 34, 4. For those who are in a position that we've lost years of our lives because of our past, and quite possibly we're allowing our past to take away years from our present and our future, Joel 2, 25, God will restore the years. Me and you will humble ourselves. Heal us, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We care for you, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. You're awesome. You're awesome. Thank you. 
Thank you for pointing out our flaws and thank you for healing us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I love you, family. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for any support. And we have a second channel now. I'll put it in the comment section below. Subscribe there. Those are shorter edited videos. Those actually go to Instagram. So if you prefer to see them on Instagram, follow Neftali1981 on Instagram. But if you want to see them on YouTube, I have that channel there for you. And that's if you enjoy these long videos, you may just enjoy the shorter ones throughout the week. So you'll still have this one on Sundays, but throughout the week, you'll have shorter ones on that channel. So go ahead and consider subscribing. Press that little bell icon so you can get notified. And I love you. God bless you. And pray for me. I appreciate the prayers. I'm not going to act like I'm the, you know, I don't need them. I need them. And I thank you for them. Love you, fam.